In 1814, the first successful steam engine was designed. By century's end, electricity was entering our homes and lives. Mark Twain was on the printed page, and Grover Cleveland was in the White House. America was shaping in new and broad strokes heading into the 20th century. The game of baseball was also developing from its infancy to a staple of national competition. Part of the game's evolution was discovering new faces who might become stars. An emerging name, who took a while to find his playing feet, was Ed Delahanty. Big Ed stood six foot one, and you could say athletics ran in the family. One of five brothers who at some point played in the majors, he was the oldest and by far most successful. After two years dominating semi-pro pitching in a couple different leagues, Ed was picked up by the National League Phillies in 1888. He spent parts of three seasons between Philadelphia and the Cleveland Infants of the Players League, where his defense struggled. Though he hit 296 in 115 games, his fielding percentage in 76 games at shortstop was a horrendous 830. His defensive game slowly improved after moving to the outfield and exponentially at the plate, carving a name as a true slugger and star of the game. Delahanty played alongside Dan Brothers, Sam Thompson, and Nap Lajoie with the 1896 Phillies. Other teammates through his career included Billy Hamilton, Tim Keefe, Elmer Flick, and manager Harry Wright. Amazingly, teams he was a part of never challenged for a pennant. Ed hit 416 in 1894 and became the second player ever to hit four home runs in a game. Between 1893 and 1899, he led baseball with 65 home runs and 834 RBI. Legend has it that he hit a ball so hard it broke into two pieces. In 1902, he became the first player to win a batting title in both the National and American Leagues. He finished the season with a 400 batting average three times and led all of baseball at least once in seemingly every major category. He truly was one of the first great all-around, or five-tool, players. Ed's 346 lifetime batting average, based on a minimum of 3,000 plate appearances, is still the fifth highest ever. He was nicknamed the King of Swat, but was also known as a heavy drinker who wasted much of his earnings betting on horses. 42 games into the 1903 season, he was actually suspended from the Washington Senators for excessive drinking and constant headbutting with management. He was batting 333 at the time. Ed looked into joining the New York Giants, a move that violated contractual agreements previously set in place. His mood swings became violent and behavior suspect. On July 2nd, while on a train to New York, he became so rowdy the conductor threw him off in Fort Erie on the Canadian side of the Niagara River citing drunk and disorderly conduct. Railroad workers claimed to have seen him chasing after the train on the railroad bridge. He apparently fell off and was swept away into the falls, for no witnesses attested to that event. Some feel his death was accidental. Others hold the theory that he committed suicide, for he had recently taken out a large insurance policy with his daughter being listed as the beneficiary. It was reported all his personal belongings were left in the previous evening's hotel room. Still, there is another claim that he was in possession of valuable jewelry, including many diamonds, and since they were never found, he might have been murdered. He was just 35. We'll never know exactly what happened that fateful night, but a plaque in Cooperstown rests for us to reflect on the dominance Ed Delahanty supplied during the period in time baseball fully developed.